One of the most fun pictures you can take at night are light trails. That's where you allow a subject to actually cross the frame while you're exposing it, and that turns any lights on it into really attractive looking streaks. It works particularly well with vehicles, cars, bikes, and especially buses. Now, the thing that I like about using this technique for buses is that they have lights at the bottom, the middle and the top, so you're going to get those light trails all across the frame. However, one of the things that you do have to be aware about is your exposure. So let's have a look at how I've set this up. So the first step is to frame this picture. And what I really like is the road leading into the frame. So I'm going to just position it to the side there. And the next thing I need to worry about is the actual exposure itself because I've got it on the normal photo mode here. And if I was to take a picture of a vehicle going past, it would be frozen on the frame. It would be completely static. And that doesn't make for the kind of interesting shot that I'm after. I'll just demonstrate it here with this bus going past. That's gonna freeze it, it's gonna look completely static. And that is not the effect that I'm after. What I wanna do is use a long exposure to actually trail the lights as they go past. And to do that, you're going to need to take control over the exposure, and that means trying to find some sort of expert or pro mode. I've got one here on this phone, and this allows me to manually adjust all of these settings. And the important here, one here is the shutter speed. And I'm going to choose a much longer exposure. Notice how it was actually suggesting something like a hundredth of a second. I'm going to take that right down here to say one second or two seconds and that is going to give me a much longer exposure which is going to allow those lights to trail. However, the longer exposure is also going to make that picture brighter. So you have to make sure that your ISO sensitivity is at the lowest value and even then your picture may end up being too bright. It's just a case of taking a picture and seeing. So I've got a bus coming along right now. I'm going to wait until it's here and now I'll take the picture as it drives past. Now during that exposure the bus didn't quite make it all the way across the frame, but that may still end up looking quite nice. I really don't know how these are going to end up until afterwards in playback. So I'm just going to keep taking pictures of buses as they go past. And it's also important to try different exposures because you'll find that some will work better than others depending on the speed of the vehicle and also how close you are to them. This first picture was taken with the normal photo mode and the camera has done its best job at freezing the action. The bus looks completely static, it's nice and sharp. It's a great looking night photo, but it is not the effect that we want. We want that nice long exposure trailed headlights. So this was my second attempt where I'd gone into the expert mode and I set the shutter speed to two seconds as an experiment. Now two seconds was long enough for the bus to completely drive past and I got some really nice looking light trails from it. But unfortunately, it's just a bit too bright for what this camera could handle and this picture has become overexposed. So I'm gonna to need to choose a picture that has got a shorter exposure. You may however be able to make this darker when you post it. So here's a version with a one second exposure and the balance of light is looking much better. I really like the way that you've got the headlights of the bus as well as the actual destination in the middle of the bus coming out at you almost like a science fiction hyperspace effect. It's a really dynamic looking picture, but it's always worth going through all of the other ones you get in case you end up with something that looks better. And here's my favorite picture of the sequence that I took. Again, it's a one second exposure, but it's taken a little bit later on when the bus was a bit closer and it's managed to go across the entire frame. So not only do we have light trails from the lights within the bus, but we've also got some blurring from the bus itself and it just looks a lot more colorful. And again, you've got that really dynamic set of diagonal lines leading you into the image. This is my favorite one of the lot.